Hello everyone, it's AG and today I guess I'm going to have to call myself out. So I've spoken about this before in my week one vlog for the Blacklit Challenge. So what happened was that I came across a comment on the Barnes and Noble video talking about the classics community and um, this person basically said that they were disappointed to see the lack of diversity within the classics community. At least just looking at the TBR videos of like what everyone is planning on reading this year. And it wasn't until then that I actually realised how homogenous my own TBR was because looking back I think I chose about 12 books and one was written by a Japanese author, the other by a Nigerian, and the rest was really just white people. And so when I realised that, I just knew that I had to do better. I mean, the classics community is all about gaining appreciation for classics especially seeing how focused booktube is on new releases. And it is an absolutely amazing initiative, which is why I joined in the first place. But that comment really made me think about why when we think about classics here on booktube, we only almost exclusively consider Western classics. I think most of us booktubers live in the West and thus have a Western perspective when it comes to classics. And I think that is exactly what we should be mindful of. I think that for me has been sort of the first step to, I guess, recalibrate and shift my perspective. I want to be considerate of other people's realities. I want to get to know the works that in Korea or Colombia are considered to be classics. I want to know what type of qualities in literature are appreciated in different parts of the world. It's these type of explorations that really excite me. And yes, this can also be done within Western literature. But I mean, what's the fun of restricting yourself? Either way, what it comes down to is that I will be switching up my TBR. I want to discover books from underrepresented voices. And that's really important to me. So I decided to break my book buying ban and buy a couple of these type of books. What's more is that I've actually started up my own book club over on Patreon. It's called the Diverse Classics Book Club and I know it's a very creative name. <laughs> you can join us from the lowest tier which is $1 a month. Each month we will select a classic which we will read and discuss throughout the month. We will be starting in March and there already is a poll on Patreon so you can help pick our first book. The options for March are The Boxman by Kobo Abe, Chronicle of a Death Foretold by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, Passing by Nella Larson, and The Story of Hong Gildong. Anyway, for the rest of the video, I just wanted to talk about some of the classics that I bought. So yeah, let's jump into it. Passing by Nella Larson is about an African-American woman named Irene who reconnects with one of her childhood friends called Claire. She finds out, however, that after Claire's father passed away, Claire started passing as white, basically hiding her true identity from everyone, including her racist husband. Claire and her dangerous secret pose an increasingly powerful threat towards Irene's security. And so both women are forced to confront the hazards of public and private deception. Chronicle of a Death Foretold by Gabriel Garcia Marquez is about a man named Santiago. He gets brutally murdered by two brothers in a small town. The thing is that all of the townspeople knew that this was going to happen, including Santiago. But no one did anything to prevent this death. 27 years later, a man arrives at the town to piece together the truth from the contradictory testimonies of the town's folk. The story of Hong Gildong is one of the most important pieces of classic Korean fiction. It's about the illegitimate son of a government minister. Hong possesses uncanny powers and wisdom beyond his years. But his second class status prevents him from moving up within society. So he decides to leave home and seek a greater path and thus becomes the leader of a fearless band of outlaws. The Boxman by Kobo Abe is pretty straightforward. It's set in Tokyo and we follow an unnamed protagonist who decides to give up his identity and basically live with a box on top of his head. Eugene Onegin by Alexander Pushkin is a Russian classic. 
Pushkin's great-grandfather came from Cameroon. The crazy thing about this was that he was actually kidnapped and gifted to Peter the Great, who at the time was the Tsar of the Russian Empire. Either way, this book is about Eugene Onegin, who moves to St. Petersburg once he inherits a country estate there. He strikes up a friendship with his neighbour, Vladimir Lensky. However, things quickly turn sour once Eugene starts courting Olga, who is actually Lensky's fiance? Then I also got the portable 19th century African American women writers. The title is pretty self explanatory and it contains works written by Sojourner Truth, Hannah Crafts, Harriet Jacobs, Ella Shepard, and many more. The next one is Who Would Have Thought by Maria Amparo Ruiz de Berton. This actually is the debut novel of the first Mexican-American novelist. The story is about a Mexican orphan named Lola Medina who gets saved by Dr. Norval from Indian captors. Norval takes her back to his home in New England where she gets shunned by the townsfolk. However, everyone gets captivated by Lola once word about the gold accompanying her gets out. Then I have this short story collection by Nick Joaquin, the woman who had two navels and the tales of the tropical gothic. The back says, set amid the ruins of Manila devastated by World War II, his stories are steeped in the post-colonial anguish and hopes of his era and meditate on the challenges of the Filipinos individual's new freedom after a long history of colonialism. This collection includes his best known stories and his celebrated play, A Portrait of the Artist as Filipino. Then I have No No Boy by John Okada. This book tells the story of a man named Ichiro Yamada. During the Second World War, Yamada answers no twice on the compulsory government questionnaire in the United States, asking if he would serve in the armed forces and swear his loyalty to the United States. Unwilling to pledge his loyalty to a country that interned him and his family, Ichiro earns himself two years in prison and the hostility of his family and his community once he returns to his home in Seattle. Well, these were a couple of the books that I bought. I will be discussing them and others in future videos. Either way, uh, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. A huge thank you to Klavik, Chris, Diane, Jen, and Tara for supporting me over on Patreon. Thank you.